Is there a coyote in the yard? Is there a coyote out there? There is a coyote. Well, folks, I want to show you my latest acquisition. <laughs> Not long ago, a friend of mine reached out and he offered me his tractor. I've been planning on replacing my Kubota, but I didn't want to do it until I finalize my next property sale, which is coming to an end here sometime in the near future. But he offered it to me now. I need a tractor now, and the terms were too good to pass up. I wasn't really sure if I wanted it at first because it's about half the size of what I had. Like I said, the terms were very attractive and really for my application here, I'm not working out in big farm fields. I'm getting the tractor in the woods. The smaller tractor will probably be a plus. So we agreed upon it, we struck a deal, and he sent it up to me. And I'll show you what's in the yard now. Yeah, so this is a 2017 Coyote 2610. Like I said, it's uh, quite a bit smaller than my Kubota. It's a nice machine. It's only got 220 hours on it. It's got chains, and it came with a few other implements. The back hoe, I'm surprised how small the back hoe is, but like I said, um, my other one stuck way up here and I'd be driving through the woods and be hitting branches and pulling branches down on top of me. So for going through the woods, this will be a plus. Oh, well, um, we'll see. Uh, so if you've been following along, you remember a few weeks ago, I had my friend's John Deere backhoe here, and he's pulled all the stumps where I'm going to have a little spot to park our vehicles, and then I used the machine and I stumped out where the garden's going to go. So I um, had that for a few days, and then he took that back, and now with all the stumps pulled here, I've got uh, three truckloads of gravel coming. And we're going to give this little coyote tractor its maiden voyage and spread it out and see how it works out. So let's see how she goes. Well, the little machine is doing well. I can grade so much better with this because it's smaller and I can see the bucket better. I, I don't really know why, but this stuff is spreading so nice. I spread the first load and then the second 10 wheeler came in and sunk in like that far. It was packed that, that well with the little machine. 
I'm, I'm thrilled. One more load in the parking area and then I'm going to get another load. I'm going to have a little road going around to the back of the yard to put, you know, so I can access my firewood and stuff like that. Take a look at this. Just for moving that stuff around with the bucket. It's come out really nice. You know, I got to fill that corner up and then grate it all out a little bit more and uh, fill in over there. But it's just awesome. We are getting stuff done this year, man. we making up a few more cables. And some more over here. Some more chokers there. Can I get these pines down? Yeah, so then, after those trees are down, got to get my buddy's machine over here and pull these stumps, because that little machine's not going to do it. Get the stumps pulled. Then, I'm going to get some manure over here. And then take all of the stuff that we've raked up over the last few years and piled up. It's all decomposed now. And we're going to take all of that compost and put it all over this garden area. Yeah, so after the parking area is done, you can see kind of where the grass stops there. And running parallel to the wall, well that looks about maybe six or seven feet of grass. That's going to come in a straight line parallel to the wall. It's going to be a nice little gravel driveway that comes back in here. It's going to go to the backyard where I have all the firewood. And I'm going to get the building permit for the workshop, and the workshop's going to be used for the new farm business. It's all coming together, folks. Well, I'm tuckered out. <laughs> I certainly put my time in this year. Huh. Today is the sixth or the seventh day straight that I've been working on my trails and my tree stands. I've put in a good 40 hours this week just on this alone. It's a good investment of my time though. Last year I cut a nice network of trails I usually do it around July and August, but by hunting season, there were already maple trees falling all over the place. They're getting that flat fungus, they get weak, they bust off. It's actually getting difficult to find a safe place to put a tree stand because of that. But I've done my homework, been running my trail cams. Uh, I cleaned up all of those trails, plus I've cut some new trails. Now, I've hung stands last year, and after hunting them, I, I found, like, well, if I could move my stand a little ways, you know, sometimes only 100 to 150 feet, I'd be a little bit better off. So that's what I've been doing. Getting my stands moved, and I'm all done. I'm all done. I have two chain-on tree stands I just got to take down and pull out of there. And now I don't have to go back into those areas at all until hunting season. I'll just go back in about every 10 days or so and switch out the SD card in my cameras, see what's going on. But I am set up really better than ever. People ask me all the time if they can hunt my property. Well, the problem with that is I spend a lot of money on the land, pay the taxes, but more than that, I work my butt off doing the scouting, learning the deer patterns, setting up stands, and cutting and maintaining the trails. So, it's very rare occasion you have anybody working right alongside with you. They have their own stands, they do their own homework, and they put in the sweat equity. Well, the way it works out is, okay, I set up stands, and I cut trails that go to my stand so I can get in and out quietly. And it also funnels the deer traffic to the stands. But the problem is it funnels the hunters to me. It really ticks me off when I work my butt off cutting and maintaining trails. And then a hunter comes out 
and they walk my trails. So I get up at four in the morning, uh, leave the camp in the dark, get into my stand so I can be all set up and in position at dawn, and then in a little while, here comes a hunter right to my stand. All right? Well, <laughs> it's understandable when you're out on a public land somewhere, but not here. So it gets tiring. And sometimes, you know, I decide just to let the does walk, not shoot any does, or if I see, uh, you know, just sometimes I just don't feel like shooting and I just leave the deer walk and then uh, it goes by my stand and then 20 minutes later someone shoots it. So, but you know, hunting is a solitary sport for me. It always has been. And when I hunt with somebody else, a lot of times the competition factor comes into the game and I hate that. I don't want that crap in my hunting. I come out here to enjoy the whole process of being in the woods, hunting, seeing the game, totally at peace, not rushing in or out of anything, just doing it the way that I want to do it. And that's why I buy my own hunting land and I hunt my own hunting land. So this year, it's entirely solo, solo, Han Solo in the deer woods this year. And uh, I don't want to see anybody out here. You know, a lot of times people don't understand stuff like that. And the only people to do are the landowners. It's a different game. <laughs>